FM 88.1 WHPR, Highland Park. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. When we join together like this, it helps to clear up all the doubts. When we join together like this, we welcome you to this humble house. When we join together like this, spread joy and peace, no need to pout. When we join together like this, it shows what love is all about. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow, don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow, don't let peace slip through your hands. People tell your fathers, tell your sons, tell those you love and everyone. Don't ever stop when the immediate task is done. Disparity is on the run. Open your hearts up to the truth. Don't let their lies bamboozle you. Right here, right now, we're living proof. We're all defined by what we do. We're all defined by what we do. Set aside our differences and let us give up. Welcome to our program. In the name of the Almighty Creator, most merciful, the most mercy giving. Welcome to our program. Mankind is the family of God. The focus of our program today is the centuries of Trinity or execution. I will begin by quoting from Miss Goddard, a roadmap of guidance and misguidance within the Abrahamic Religions by Dr. Lawrence B. Brown. Quote, Unitarians versus Trinitarians. Quote, They decided that all liars should be whipped, and a man came along and told them the truth, and they hanged him. Unquote. T.W.H. Crossland from his book, The Little Stories. Many tenets of Trinitarian faith are regarded as, quote, the oldest rules in the book, unquote, but in fact are derived from non-biblical sources. Rather than being, quote, rule number one, unquote, as a person might logically expect given their primacy, these tenets of faith are not found in the Bible at all. Alice would object, and in fact, Many great thinkers have objected, thinking like Bishop Pontinus of Lyons, murdered in the late second century, along with all the dissenting or disagreeing Christians who petitioned Pope Eleutherus for an end to persecution. Lyondius, a follower, follower of apostolic Christianity, and let me pause there, apostolic Christianity are those people that followed what Jesus taught, peace be upon him, which was not a trinity, but worshiped one God. But going back to the text. And explainer of Pauline innovations, murdered in 208 Christian era. Origen, who died in prison in 254 Christian era after prolonged torture for preaching the unity of God and rejection of the trinity. Diodorus, Pamphilius, tortured and murdered, 309 Christian era. Lucian, tortured for his views and killed in 312 Christian era. Donatus, chosen to be Bishop of Carthage in 313 Christian era, and subsequently the leader and inspiration of a Unitarian movement that grew to dominate Christianity in North Africa, right up until Emperor Constantine ordered their massacre. So complete was their obliteration that little of the sacred writings of this once huge sect remains. Arius, may the mercy of the Creator be upon all these people. The Presbyter of Alexandria, Paul's here, Alexandria was in the area of what we call Egypt today. Going back to the text. Whose motto was, quote, Follow Jesus, peace be upon him, as he preached, unquote. 
killed by poisoning in 336 Christian era. Asubius of Nicodemus, and not to mention a million plus Christians killed for refusing to accept official church doctrine in the immediate period following the Council of Nisa. Later examples include Louis Hetzer, decapitated, meaning his head was cut off, February 4th, 1529. Michael Sobitus, burned at the stake, October 27, 1553, using green branches, still in leaf, to produce an agonizingly slow smoldering fire. Francis Davidis died in prison, 1579. Faustus Solcinus died in 1604. John Biddle, who suffered banishment to Sicily in multiple imprisonments, the last of which hastened his death. Biddle, who considered the terminology employed by Trinitarians, quote, fitter for conjurers than Christians, unquote, established a breastwork of arguments against the assault of Trinitarian theology of such effectiveness that on at least one occasion, debate opponents arranged his arrest to avoid facing him in public. He left a legacy of free thinkers affirming divine unity, including some of the leading intellectuals of the day, such as Sir Isaac Newton, John Locke, and John Milton. Battles, days, and banishment also gave rise to one of, to one of the most touching comments on religious persecution, penned by a sympathetic correspondent of the Gospel Advocate. Quote, the conclave met, the judge was set, man mounted on God's throne, and they did judge a matter there that rests with him alone. A brother's faith, they made a crime and crushed thought's native right sublime. Unquote. During his lifetime, that is the lifetime of Biddle, Parliament attempted to kill, literally that is, Biddle's movement by establishing the death penalty for those who denied the Trinity on May 2nd, 1648. The year of his death, Parliament passed the Second Act of Uniformity and outlawed all non-Episcopal worship and clergy. Under this act, 2,257 priests were ejected from the clergy and over 8,000 people died in prison out of refusal to accept the Trinity. There's at least one case where, in the selective wisdom of the church, the population of an entire country was condemned. I will be quoting from John Lothrop Motley, 1884, The Rise of the Dutch Republic, A History, Volume 2, London and Bickers, Sons, page 155 and 156. Quote, In the year, the most sublime sentence of death was promulgated, which has ever been produced since the creation of the world. The Roman tyrant wished that his enemies' heads were all upon a single neck, that he might strike them off at a blow. The Inquisition assisted Philip to place the heads of all his Netherlands subjects upon a single neck for the same fell purpose. Upon the 16th of February, 1568, a sentence of the Holy Office condemned, condemned all the inhabitants of the Netherlands to death as heretics. Unquote. Only a decade earlier, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain, recommended that, quote, all Netherlanders who remain obstinate in their errors were burned alive, and those who were admitted to penance or repented were beheaded, unquote. So even the penitent, those that repented from this, were not to be spared. The above list catalogs individuals once regarded by the Catholic Church as the most notorious of heretics and by Unitarian Christians, and let me pause there for emphasis, 
the Unitarian Christians were those that followed the original teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. There is only one God. He has no sons or daughters. Going back to the text, and held by the Unitarian Christians as the greatest martyrs to the revival of the teachings of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Some of the Unitarians mentioned above were associated with movements of such significance as to have swept across countries. But in all cases, the Trinitarian Church eventually dominated through the combination of superior force, inferior tolerance, and willingness to sacrifice fellow men and women to the cause of religious purification. Although they used the same book for guidance, Unitarian and Trinitarian Christianity could hardly differ more in their methodology. Trinitarian Christianity condemns anything that conflicts with derived doctrine, whereas Unitarian Christianity condemns anything that conflicts with spiritual evidence, excuse me, with anything that conflicts with scriptural evidence. The conflict between these two standards lies at the heart of the debate. The Catholic Church succeeded in killing off dissenting or disagreeing individuals, but failed to suppress the thoughts and fierce passions they expressed. Far greater success would have been achieved had the Church provided a rational and conclusive rebuttal to the challenges and established the authority through intellectual superiority rather than through tyranny. However, Church history documents nearly two millennia, which is a thousand years, of failure to overthrow the arguments of the Unitarians, much to the discredit of the Trinitarians. Examples can be taken from the life of Arius, may the Almighty be pleased with him, but with the caution that, with rare exception, few books about Arius remain, other than those written by his enemies. Consequently, most authors' opinions betray an unkind prejudice, and the only objective course is to examine his pure teachings. Perhaps one of the earliest Arian arguments is that if Jesus, peace be upon him, was, a, quote, the Son of God, unquote, then there must be, have been a time when he did not exist. If Jesus, peace be upon him, was created of the Father, then there must have been a time when the Eternal Father preceded the later created Jesus, peace be upon him. Hence, the Creator and his creation are not the same, and Jesus, peace be upon him, cannot be considered a partner in Godhead. Arius, may the mercy of the Creator be upon him, held that if Jesus, peace be upon him, truly did say, quote, my Father is greater than I, unquote, as stated in John 14, chapter 28, verse, then equating Jesus, peace be upon him, with God is to deny the Bible. Arius, in the mercy of the Creator be upon him, suggested that if anything is evident from the teaching of Jesus, peace be upon him, is that he affirmed his own humanity and the inviolability of divine unity. Inviolability means this is something that cannot be changed or challenged. Going back to the text. The Trinitarian Church clergy claimed Jesus, peace be upon him, was of the essence of God. Unquote. Arius, Arius and Trinitarian Christians alike objected for, quote, from the essence, unquote, and, quote, of one essence, unquote, of materialist expressions, subelian in origin, not encountered in Scripture, and are contrary to the church authority, since the expression originated at a council of Antioch in 269 Christian era. When the Catholic Church subsequently asserted that Jesus was, quote, of God, unquote, the Arians, may the Almighty be pleased with them, responded that the Bible describes all people as being, quote, of God, unquote. In the verse, quote, now all things are all people as being of God. Now all things of God. Quote, 2 Corinthians 5th chapter 18th verse. See also 1 Corinthians 8th chapter 6th verse. Forced to correct themselves, the church then asserted that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not a creature, but the power and eternal image of the Father and true God. 
The Aryan response that the Bible describes all men as, quote, the image and glory of God, unquote. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 7th verse, left the church confounded. In the words of British theologian Henry Melvin Gawkin, quote, the longer the debate went on, the clearer it became that the meaning of Scripture could not be defined without going outside Scripture for words to define it, unquote. To adopt such a methodology is to propose that man can explain revelation better than the source of revelation himself. So the argument started and so they continue to the present day. After failing to win the rational argument, the Trinitarian Church violently suppressed dissension to the point where entire populations were terrorized into conformity. In the process, the church failed to address the issues. As Castillo, one of the followers of the 16th century theologian Savitas commented, quote, to burn a man is not to prove a doctrine, unquote, meaning the church can reduce a man to ashes, but can only eliminate his arguments through intelligent rebuttal. Typical of those who lack the ability to substantiate their beliefs, but who process the power of oppression. Violent response has been the historical reflex against those who challenge Trinitarian creed. That this oppression existed in the vacuum of reasonable just justification weakens rather than strengthens the institution. As John Tolan commented, quote, this conduct, on the contrary, would make them suspect all to be a cheat and imposture because men will naturally cry out when they are touched in a tender part. No man would be angry at a question who's able to answer it, unquote. In the words of H.G. Wells, quote, they were intolerant of question or dissent, not because they were sure of their faith, but because they were not. They wanted conformity for reasons of policy. But the 13th century, by the 13th century, the church was evidently already morbidly anxious about the gaunting doubts that might presently lay the whole structure of its pretensions in ruins, unquote. Pythagoras summarized the risk of speaking one's mind in such a circumstance, quote, to tell of God among men a prejudicial opinion is not safe, unquote. Unitarians throughout history noted that Jesus, peace be upon him, himself predicted, quote, they will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God a service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. A quote. John 16, chapter, verses 2 and 3. The establishment of Trinitarian doctrine by the Inquisitor's chamber, fire, sword, and the headman's axe does not threaten us today. Instead, of the horrors of the past, we are now faced with a variety of emotionally provocative justifications coupled with a systematic avoidance of relevant issues. Disarmed as they now are, much of the modern Christian world follows the example of Miser of Nicholas, a bishop at the Council of Nicaea who boxed his own ears whenever Arius spoke. Some would suggest the response of Trinitarians to Unitarian challenges is not much different today. Clergy tend to avoid debate and cloak their theology in a mantle of emotionally charged, manipulative oratory embroidered with the glitter of self-righteousness. Some are swayed by the sanctimonious presentation and parroted sectarian lines. Others are not. More than a few God-fearing people tire of such psychological ploys and seek to re-examine the unfounded tenets of the past in the light of modern knowledge an open-minded analysis. So, what happened to the pure teachings of Jesus and his mission and his movement? To answer, begin answering that question, we will turn to How to Tell Others About Islam by Yahya Emmerich. Page 46. 
the development of Christianity. Allah, the Almighty Creator, entrusted the children of Israel with his divine message. Yet they failed to live up to the precepts bestowed upon them. As the centuries pass, the Jews gradually layered their revelations with speculations, additions, and deletions, until all that remained was a legal-minded, formalistic religion based upon ritual. Such a development impeded the spread of the Almighty's message to all humanity. Accordingly, Allah, the Creator, sent the Jews one more messenger, the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, may he be pleased, may the Almighty be pleased with him. His mission was to retrieve in them the true spirit, to revive in them the true spirit of faith. Footnote 51, referring to the Holy Quran. And Surah al Bayina, Surah 98, Miraculous Ayat 4, where Allah, the Creator, indicates that the people of the book, the Jews and Christians, fell into schisms and sects even after clear evidence was given to them. Also see Holy Quran 19 Surah Miraculous Line 37. It is currently estimated that there are nearly 40,000 different Christian sects in the world today. The majority of the world's Christians are grouped under the Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox umbrellas. Going back to the text. Jesus, peace be upon him, was born of a special miracle to be a sign, a sign from the Almighty Creator to humanity. Footnote 52. For the true account of the life of Jesus, peace be upon him, see the Holy Quran, his birth, Surah 3, Miraculous Land 42, Surah 3, Miraculous Lines 45 through 51, his mission, Surah 19, Miraculous Lines 28 through 32, Surah 5, Miraculous Lines 46 through 47, his escape from certain death, Surah 4, Miraculous Lines 157 through 159, comments on his personality and nature, Surah 2, Miraculous Line 87, Surah 3, Miraculous Line 59, Surah 4, Miraculous Line 171, Surah 5, Miraculous Line 17 and 75. Jesus, peace be upon him, drew some supporters and disciples among the Jews and never wavered from teaching pure monotheism. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. He is reported to have said, quote, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death unto life. The Bible, John, 5th chapter, 24th verse, unquote. But his insistence upon trust in the Almighty Creator Genuine faith and an endearing love of the next life angered many in the establishment, and they began to conspire against him. And after plotting together in secret for over a year, they eventually had him arrested. By making false accusations and bringing contrived testimony, they successfully goaded their Roman overlords into sentencing him to death. But the Almighty Creator answered the prayer of his messenger, Jesus, peace be upon him, and saved him though the Jews thought they had killed him. Footnotes. 50, footnote 54. Some early Muslim commentators have held that the man who portrayed Jesus, peace be upon him, to his enemies was Judas, who was mistaken for Jesus, peace be upon him, and crucified in his place. This was the view held by some early Christian sects. Paul's here. This is also mentioned in the Gospel of Barnabas. Barnabas was one of the original disciples of Jesus. May peace be upon him. And Jesus, peace be upon him, had placed him to be his scribe. Had given him the job of being his scribe. Going back to the text. After Jesus, peace be upon him, was taken from the world by the Almighty Creator to await his later reappearance, his disciples dispersed and continued to preach sincerity and faith. But as new converts began to enter the still very Jewish sect, 
They brought with them many influences and ideas alien to the concept of monotheism, a worship of the one God. These Greeks and Romans were used to worshiping images of humans and human beings, I may add human beings themselves, such as Caesar, but going back to the text. And they were well versed in the ways of philosophy and complex theology. They began to mix their old beliefs with the new and synthesize a hybrid faith, much to the horror of some of the original teachers. Footnote. Nearly all modern day practices of Christianity have their roots in paganism. Christmas, which falls on the day of the winter solstice, was a day of celebration for the devotees of Mithra, the sun god of Rome. Easter is simply the English spelling of the Babylonian goddess Ashtar, Ashtar in the Phoenician language. Everything from holy wreaths to painted eggs can be traced to pagan pre-Christian sources. Several denominations in the United States, excuse me, several denominations in the United States and Canada have attempted to expose this falsity of such practices to the general public with little success. This can be attributed to the fact that who, who is to say which Christianity is right? Christians can choose to believe whatever they want, it seems. But more details see the pamphlets produced, ironically enough, by the worldwide Church of God, entitled, quote, The Plain Truth About Easter, and, quote, The Resurrection Was Not on Sunday, Worldwide Church of God, Pasadena, California. Paul followed this path. Let me mention for clarification the path of combining the teaching of Jesus with the pagan beliefs. Going back to the text. He was a Jew who went from persecuted Christians to helping them. He claimed to see a vision of Jesus while traveling on the road to Damascus and thereafter became a believer. He attempted to merge the two traditions, Western polytheism and Judaic monotheism into one unified religion with Jesus' peace be upon him as his focal point. Footnote 57. Paul began to espouse the idea that Jesus, peace be upon him, was the son of the Almighty Creator. That his death ended the need to follow the laws of Moses, peace be upon him. And that his blood was a sacrifice to the Creator as payment for the sins of mankind. Going back to the text. Paul was opposed by the traditional companions of the blessed Jesus, peace be upon him, like Barnabas, and the Almighty have mercy upon him. But others joined him. He displayed remarkable zeal in promoting his new belief, wrote many letters, and traveled extensively. Footnote number 58. Most of the New Testament is made up of his writings or those of his supporters. Later Christians labeled these letters, quote, inspired, unquote, and hold them to be revelation from God. Going back to the text. Paul, however, began to annoy the prevailing Roman authorities and was arrested and thrown into prison. Eventually, traditional accounts say he was executed. In time, the new religion gained ground throughout the empire, but the Roman government, fearful of movements which competed for its absolute authority, sought to check its advance and began a program of repression. F footnote number 59. They were named, quote, Christians, quote, unquote, by idolaters in Antioch who knew of no other way to describe them. Reference Acts 11, chapter 26, verse. The name is derived from the Greek word, quote, Christos, unquote, which is equivalent to the Semitic, quote, Messiah, unquote, which means anointed or rubbed with oil. Going back to the text. Christian doctrine by the second century was still an unsettled issue, so the religion was marvelously adaptable in the new environment. A church structure began to emerge consisting of regular meetings, a leadership hierarchy, and symbols of the faith. A secret net network spread to the four corners of the empire, and by the fourth century, the Romans finally acknowledged the new sect as legitimate. 
Due to the unsettled doctrinal disputes which began to flare up, however, a council was organized by the Roman Emperor Constantine in the year 325 at Nicaea. Complex issues such as the nature of Jesus, peace be upon him, original sin, atonement, and the form the new scripture should take dominated the proceedings. The purpose of these talks was to unify Christianity once and for all, but several serious factors worked against the participants at the council. These were directly related to the evolution of Christianity itself after the first generation. The Christian world was divided almost from the beginning between a Latin-speaking West and a Greek-speaking East. Some sects, particularly those in the Middle East and North Africa, held that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a prophet and not God in the flesh, while the Latins and Greeks blended the teachings of Jesus with their own pagan traditions, which called for man-gods. This led to a synthesis or compromise where Jesus, peace be upon him himself, was elevated to godhood. Footnote 63. Arius, may the mercy of the Creator be upon him, a North African Christian leader, publicly opposed the position taken by the Roman, taken by the Roman oriented council by pointing out that Jesus, peace be upon him, always affirmed the divine unity. And this is quoted from Jesus, the prophet of Islam, by Muhammad Atta ar Rahim, page 13. Going back to the text. And by sheer force of majority, the man God of the Christ of the Trinitarian theorists, led by the enigmatic and the Nazis, voted their position into official sanction. Footnote sixty four. In a letter to a friend, Arius, may the mercy of the Creator be upon him, complain, quote, We are persecuted because we say that Jesus, peace be upon him, had a beginning. Well, God has no beginning, unquote. And this is quoted again from Jesus, a prophet of Islam, by Atar al-Rahim, page 93. Going back to the text. This, however, did not settle the issue of Christian unity. Lingering political and cultural difference, differences continue to divide the eastern and western halves of Christianity. In the 6th century, the monophysite churches, Unitarian broke from their eastern cousins. Later, in the 11th century, the Western Church and the Eastern Church broke off all former relations with each other, resulting in what is known as the, quote, Great Schism, unquote. The Western Church since has since come to be known as the, quote, Catholic, unquote, or, quote, Western Catholic, unquote, Church, while the Eastern Church is now called, quote, the, quote, Eastern Orthodox, unquote, Church. In the 5th century, while Germanic tribes from Northern Europe conquered the, West, the Western Roman Empire, but then subsequently adopted the values and religion of those they vanquished. After adding their own idol-worshipping practice to the mixing bowl of Christianity, the new rulers gave the Catholic Church permission to convert all within their borders to the faith. Footnote 66. Charlemagne, who died 814 Christian era, decreed that any who would not accept Christianity should be put to the sword. This is on page 302, quote, Readings in Medieval History by Trek Patrick Gary, Broadview Press, 1991. However, we will, we're going to take a closer look at the, quote, Trinity or execution. To do that, we're going to refer to What Did Jesus Really Say? by Mishal Ibn Abdullah, beginning on page 291. Quote, The Roman Empire was a pagan empire. However, it was a dominant, quote, superpower, unquote, of the time. Anyone who, who could enlist its aid would have an unconquerable ally at their side and would themselves be undefeatable. On the Roman side, Emperor Constantine was greatly troubled by the swelling ranks of his Christian subjects and the great division among their ranks, 
which did not bode well for the continued stability of his empire. Most of these fringe sects now began to fade into insignificance, and the matter was now left between those who believed in the unity of God or the Unitarians and those who believed in a, quote, trinity, unquote. The Roman Empire support fluctuated between these two groups for a long time until the Trinitarians finally gained the upper hand and all but wiped out the Unitarians off the face of the earth. Over the next centuries, they slowly selected and collected the, quote, truly inspired, unquote, gospels into one volume, which later became the New Testament. They burned all of the gospels. Many sweeping campaigns, the Inquisition, unquote, were launched. Everyone found possessing any of these, quote, false, unquote, gospels was put to death and his gospel burned. Quoting from The Orthodox Corruption of Scripture by Bart Ehrman, page 7, quote, The classical understanding of the relationship of orthodoxy and heresy built a devastating challenge in 1934 with the publication of Walter Bauer's famous book. His book, possibly the most significant book on early Christianity written in modern times, Bauer argued that the early Christian church, in fact, did not comprise a single orthodoxy from which emerged a variety of competing heretical minorities. Instead, early Christianity embodied a number of divergent forms, no one of which represented the clear and powerful majority of believers against all others. In reality, what was later to be termed, quote, heresy, was in fact the original and only true form of Christianity, unquote. This state of affairs continued for many centuries, and many people were convicted of heresy and burned to death at the stake for a great variety of reasons. Yet others had their land and property confiscated and were imprisoned. Physical torture was casually used in order to extract a confession of guilt which would then be used to justify a verdict of death by burning. Some of the methods used to extract a confession of guilt were the stretching of limbs on the rack, burning with live coals, and the strapado, a vertical rack. Denial of the charges without counterproof or refusal to confess resulted in the most severe punishments, such as life imprisonment or execution and total confiscation of property. The number of those who fell victim to these inquisitions are far too numerous to list here. Examples of these people include the philosopher Giordano Bruno, Bruno, Galileo, Joan of Arc, and the religious order of knights called the Templars, among countless hundreds of thousands of others. If the Trinitarians did not have the power to burn these people at the stake during their lifetime, that they would exhume, meaning they would, uh, meaning they would uh, dig up their graves, exhume them, their bodies after their death, and burn them. After their death, and burn them after their death. John Wycliffe is an example. Footnote: The first complete translation of the Bible into to English was completed by John Wycliffe. It was because of this, quote, evil, unquote, action that his body was exhumed after his death and burned. I mean, meaning they dug, dug his body up after he was buried. On page 758 of the Oxford Companion to the Bible, we read, quote, it was Wycliffe's contention that the church could be reformed only if everyone knew God's law. And this required that the Bible be translated into the language of the people. It is uncertain how much of either version is the work of Wycliffe, of Wycliffe himself, and how much is the work of his colleagues, John Purvey and Nicholas of Hereford. In 1415, the Wycliffe Bible was condemned and burned. Purvey and Nicholas were jailed and forced to recant their Lodard principles. And in 1428, Wycliffe's body was exhumed and burned. (laughs) 
In the end, over 12 million people were put to death by the church, church's inquisitions. It's a reference apology for, for Muhammad, may prayers of peace be upon him, and the Quran by John Davenport. The Inquisitions reached their height around the middle of the 15th century in a massive and vicious persecution campaign, the major targets of which were the Moranos, converts to Christianity from Judaism, and the Moriscos, convert to Christianity from Islam, many of whom were suspected of secretly adhering to their original faith. When things began to quiet down a little, the victors, historians, and philosophers wrote their history books explaining how they managed to overcome the wicked, to defeat the blasphemers, and to burn the devil, sorcerers, and witches at the stake. These are the books which have had the greatest influence on the Western history books we have in our hands. Footnote 40. The most conservative estimates put the number of burnings for witchcraft alone at around 200,000. About 80% of these were women. This is to say nothing of the many millions who were burned to death for not converting or for other reasons. Frank Donovan, who wrote Never on a Broomstick, says, quote, Several modern writers claim that nine million people met their deaths during the witchcraft persecution but offer no valid statistical records to support this estimate. On the other hand, on the other end of the scale is an educated guess of R.H. Robbins and others that the total may have been about 200,000. Contemporary records are spotty and incomplete. Many deaths were probably never recorded and other archives have been lost through time. Whenever, Wilson, whenever a scholar of Christianity would stumble upon the truth and began to write about it, his works would invariably be destroyed. For example, Sir Isaac Newton, the 16th century Spaniard, Michael Sabitas, etc. In all cases, it was recognized that there was no need to disprove the author's evidence or refute it. Rather, it was sufficient to muzzle the opposition burn their books, extract a confession from them under duress, and expel them from society or kill them. Even the popes themselves would sometimes recognize the falsehood of the quote, Trinity, unquote, and the fact, and the fact that it was a later fabrication of mankind. One of these popes, Honorius, may the Almighty have mercy on his soul, summoned the courage to declare the truth and was subsequently officially cursed 48 years after his death by the Sinan, which was held in Istanbul at 380 Christian era. Sometimes it is an individual's own silence which proves to be the most deafening proclamation. For the period of a century and, and more, the only, quote, scriptures, unquote, used by the first Jewish followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, were the Greek Septuagint translations, commonly called the 70, of the Hebrew Old Testament, quote, the Law and the Prophets, unquote, supplemented by various Jewish apocrypha, and the apocrypha means hidden. These were the books that were hidden after the Council of Jamnia in 90 Christian era or destroyed all books except for one uh, Jewish uh, compilation. Go back to the, te the text. As we saw for the period of a century and more, the only scriptures used by the first Jewish followers of Jesus were the Greek, Greek Septuagint translations designated as a 70 of the Hebrew Old Testament quote, the Law and the Prophets, unquote, supplemented by various Jewish apocrypha and the sibling line oracles, 150 B.C. to 180 Christian era. These were the only, quote, authorities, unquote, appeal, appealed to by the early, quote, church fathers, unquote, when preaching their new faith. Nowhere do they quote the books which we know today as, quote, the New Testament, unquote. Naturally, if the, quote, history, unquote, of the Trinitarian Church regarding their chosen Gospels 
and what are claimed to be the inspired writings of Jesus versus apostles were true. And I might add here that Matthew, Luke, and John, as we see in the New Testament, all the scholars agree were not the original disciples of Jesus. But going back to the text. Naturally, if the history of the Trinitarian Church regarding their chosen Gospels and what are claimed to be the inspired writings of Jesus, peace be upon him, the so-called first apostles were true, and these writings had indeed been accepted as authoritative at that time, then they would have been the most precious and potent documents of preaching for their doctrine. Undoubtedly, they would have spoken of nothing else but would have quoted them and appealed to their authority at every turn as they have been doing through the centuries since. But for so 150 years, little or nothing besides the Old Testament and these oracles were known or quoted. As said by the great critic Solomon Renach, quote, with the exception of Papias, who speaks of a narrative by Mark and a collection of sayings of Jesus, no Christian writer of the first half of the second century, an explanation up to 150 Christian era, quotes the Gospels or their reputed authors. Unquote. Orpheus, A General History of Religions, Solomon Renard, page 218. But let us back up a little and study how and when, quote, the inspired, unquote, books of the Bible were incorporated into the Christian, quote, canon. Canon means what is official of the Bible. Well, the following are, the following was obtained from the book, quote, Isaro Hawk, unquote, among other references. In the city of Nisar, Isnik, Turkey, Turkey, in the year 325 A.D., a great conference of Christian theologians and religious scholars was convened under the order of Emperor Constantine to examine and define the status of these countless Christian Gospels. After thorough investigation, it was decided that the Epistle of Jude was genuine and believable. The rest of our current books of the Bible were declared doubtful. This was explicitly mentioned by St. Jerome in the introduction to his book. St. Jerome, of course, was a Christian scholar and a great philosopher. He was born in 340 Christian era. He translated the Bible into Latin. He was a famous bibliographer and wrote many books on the Bible. Before the year 325 Christian era, it is known that the Gospel of Barnabas was accepted as canonical in the churches of Alexandria. It is known to have been circulated in the first two centuries after Christ from the writings of Irenaeus, prophet of Islam, as a reference. Let me pause here. This is very, very notable because, as I mentioned earlier, Barnabas was the scribe of Jesus and one of the original disciples. He also opposed Paul as being a false prophet. In the Gospel of Barnabas, he quotes, Jesus, peace be upon him, as telling of the coming of our master, Muhammad, may prayers and peace be upon him. And of course, uh, confronting the first commandment and, and establishing hero Israel, the Lord thy God, is one as opposed to the Trinity. Going back to the text. After this council, council the four car Gospels were selected out of a minimum of 300 available, and the rest, including the Gospel of Barnabas, were ordered, ordered utterly destroyed. All Gospels written in Hebrew were also destroyed. In the year 364 Christian era, another council was held in the Odyssea for the same purpose. This conference of Christian scholars and theologians was not only confirmed, not only confirmed the decision of the Council of Nicaea regarding the authenticity of the Epistle of Jude, but also declared that the following six books must also be added to the list of genuine and believable books. The Book of Esther, the Epistle of James, the Second Epistle of Peter, the Second and Third Epistles of John, the Epistle of Paul to the Hebrews, 
This conference pronounced their decision to the public. The book of Revelations, however, remained out of the list of the acknowledged books in both the councils. At 397 Christian era, another great conference was held called the Council of Carthage. Augustine, a celebrated Christian scholar, was among the 126 learned participants. The members of this council confirmed the decisions of the two previous councils and also added the following books to the list of the divine books. The Book of the Songs of Solomon, the Book of Tobit, the Book of Baruch, Ecclesiasticus, and the first and second books of Maccabees. At the same time, the members of this council decided that the book of Barak was a part of the book of Jeremiah. May Allah have mercy on the prophet Jeremiah, because Barak was the deputy of Jeremiah, peace be upon him. Therefore, they did not include the name of this book separately in the list. Three more conferences were held after this in Trullo in 692, Torrance 1438, and Trent 1556. The members of these meetings confirmed the decision of the Council of Carthage. The last two councils, however, wrote the name of the book of Barak separately. After these councils, nearly all the books which had previously been doubtful among Christians were now included in the list of acknowledged books. The status of these books remained unchanged until the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. The Protestants repudiated the decisions of the councils and declared that there are only 66 truly, quote, inspiring, unquote, books of God and not 73 as claimed by the Catholics. The following books were to be rejected. The Book of Barak, the Book of Tobit, the Letter of Jude, the Songs of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, and the first and second books of Maccabees. They excluded these books from the list of acknowledged books. The Protestants also rejected the decision of their forebearers regarding some chapters of the book of Esther. This book consists of 16 chapters. They decided that the first nine chapters and three verses from chapter 10 were to be rejected. They based their decisions on the following six reasons. One, these works were considered to be false even in the original Hebrew and Chaldean languages, which were no longer available. Two, the Jews did not acknowledge them as revealed books. Three, all the Christians have not acknowledged them as believable. For Jerome said that these books are not reliable and were insufficient, insufficient to prove and support the doctrines of the faith. Kloss has openly said that these books were recited, but not in every place. Isubius specifically said in section 22 of his fourth book that these books have been tampered with and changed, in particular, the second book of Maccabees. Unquote. It, is, it now becomes apparent that books which had been lost in the original and which only existed in translation were erroneously acknowledged by thousands of theologians as divine revelation. This state of affairs leaves a non-Christian reader to distrust the unanimous decisions of Christian scholars of both the Catholic and Protestant persuasions. The followers of Catholic faith still believe in these books in blind pursuance of their forefathers. It is prerequisite of believing in a certain book as divinely revealed that it is proved through infallible arguments that the book in question was revealed through a prophet and that it has been conveyed to us precisely in the same order without any change through an uninterrupted change of narrators. It is not at all sufficient to attribute a book to a certain prophet on the basis of suppositions and conjectures. Unsupported assertions made by one or a few sects of people should not be and cannot be accepted in this connection, unquote. And I would like to refer the listener for further research to the Peace Channel. And when you get there, that you search, is the Quran the word of God? And compare the authenticity of the Holy Quran, and hopefully the Almighty will guide you to the reality that the Quran is the final true message of the Creator. 
The final guidance and revelation from the Almighty Creator is the Holy Quran and Islam. What is Islam? To bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the Almighty Creator, that He has no sons or daughters. To believe in all of the prophets, messengers of the Creator. There were more than 120,000 of them that came to different tribes and nations over the centuries, such as Moses, David, Jesus, and the final messenger, our master Muhammad, may prayers and peace be upon him, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, who lived over 1,400 years ago. To believe in the original books that were revealed to the prophets, such as the Torah to Moses, peace be upon him, the Zabor to David, peace be upon him, the Injil to Jesus, peace be upon him, and the final revelation, the Holy Quran, which has not been changed over 1,400 years, the Holy Quran, which was revealed to our master, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, who lived 1,400 years ago. May the prayers and peace of the Creator be upon him forever. To believe in the angels, which are usually not seen, that are mentioned in these books. There are many functions. There's an angel over your right shoulder, which writes your good deeds. There's an angel over your left shoulder that records your bad deeds. There's an angel that will take your soul to death. These angels have many functions. There's angels that bring down the rain, the snow, move the winds, and other functions. And they cannot sin and usually are not seen. To believe in the day of judgment. This is a day when all men and women will be raised, we will be raised from our graves. We'll be, we'll be judged by the Almighty Creator, those who followed His laws to the best of their capacity, asking for and receiving forgiveness for their sins, will be at peace with Him forever in paradise. But those that rejected Him and His laws, causing mischief on the earth, will be punished by Him forever, burning in hell. To believe in predestination, that everything that happens, happens according to the law and plan of the Almighty Creator. If you accept these principles, then your Almighty Creator is inviting you to Islam. For more information about Islam, you may call me at 434-610-5626. Again, 434-610-5626. Thank you for listening to our program, Mankind is the Family of God. When we join together like this, it helps to clear up all the doubts. When we join together like this, we welcome you to this humble house. When we join together like this, spread joy and peace, no need to pout. When we join together like this, it shows what love is all about. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. People, tell your fathers, tell your sons, tell those you love and everyone. Don't ever stop when the immediate task is done. Disparity is on the run. Open your hearts up to the truth. Don't let their lies bamboos on you. Right here, right now, we're living proof. We're all defined by what we do. We're all defined by what we do. Set aside our differences and let us give love.